The second point I wanted to mention as we're talking about the Mahdi, the awaited savior, God's final vicegerent, the one who will cleanse the earth of all forms of oppression and injustice and fill it with prosperity, with justice, with equity, with love and kindness and benevolence. As we sit right here in the courtyard where he will rule, where he will stand before millions and billions of people listening to the Imam as he lays out his mission, as he describes his mandate that's been divinely inspired to him. The second point I wanted to mention following from the previous episode is that the Imam himself has certain expectations of us. And of course, these expectations include the importance of our adherence to God's religion, to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow his orders and commandments and to refrain from his prohibitions, from acts of sin. Obviously, the Mahdi's mandate rests on a foundation and that foundation is belief in God and adherence to his uh, teachings and to his instructions for us. But one thing I want to focus on among the expectations of the Imam, our master, the awaited savior, is that we look after each other. The Imam himself says so in multiple traditions, but one of those is his famous encounter with Ali ibn Mahziyah. When the Imam tells him that you have been absent for too long, we've been waiting for you, where have you been? And so Ali ibn Mahziyar says that I didn't know how to found, find you, I didn't have access to you. As if you can just locate the Imam on a map and then just follow the route to find him. Well, that's not how it works. The Imam says to him, you're not the one who was waiting for us to show you the way. We have been the ones waiting for you to find your way. But you fail to do that because you have failed to fulfill your obligations towards your fellow believers. And so looking after each other, looking after fellow believers is part of the condition set by the Imam if we're going to meet him, if we're going to see the day he rises and returns. So let's look after each other. If not setting up charities to feed the poor worldwide, at the very least find someone from within your own family, your extended family, people who may be destitute, people who are poor, people who don't have access to the basic necessities of their lives, look after them, sponsor them. Before you sponsor orphans across the globe, which is a noble thing to do, no doubt, find out if there are people within your own family who could use help and start with them. So make sure that there is no one within your own circle of friends, your own blood relatives who is needy, who's poor and help them in the name of the Imam. Help them to please the Imam. Help them because the Imam wants you to help them. Start there and then maybe, just maybe the Imam will show you the next steps that you can take towards finding him. Inshallah, and again, we've seen many examples where the Ahlul Bayt السلام, themselves look after those who are poor, those who are destitute. So it's important that we begin there Insha'Allah. Allahumma ajjil waliyyika al-faraj wal-afiyata wa nasr.